Hi, my name's Ethan, and welcome to AnyMark's video series, Tell Me All About. On today's episode, I'll be telling you all about fasteners. We're going to start by talking about the different head types of screws. First, we have a BHCS, which stands for Button Head Cap Screw. These screws have a dome-like head that looks sort of like a button. The head shape does not require a certain tool inherently, but most BHCS utilize an Allen-type head. Next, we have an SHCS, which stands for Socket Head Cap Screw. As you might guess, these screws have what looks like a socket on the head of them. These screws generally require that an Allen wrench be used to tighten or loosen them. These screws are best for counterboring, more on that later. Now we have an FHS, and that stands for flat head screw. Flat head screws have a totally flat head that the threads on the screw taper up to. You regularly see these head types meant for Phillips or flathead screwdrivers, but Allen wrenches can also be used and are preferred. The last type of screw we're going to talk about is an HHCS, which stands for hex head cap screw. Hex heads are a flat cap in the shape of a hex that do not use the typical screwdriver types. Instead, hex heads make use of things like wrenches, socket wrenches, nut drivers, and more. Understanding the different types of screws can help you find the right one for your application. Screws can be made from a variety of materials, but many are stainless steel or aluminum. In any mark, we use zinc-plated steel screws wherever possible to provide the highest strength and best performing option. You may also see things like black oxide screws, which have similar properties but do rust over time. When selecting a screw, a general rule about length is that the screw should be the thickness of the two items it's going through, plus about a quarter of an inch. This gives the nut a good amount of thread to get a grip on when it's assembled. It's also important to understand screw sizes, imperial and metric, and what Anymark uses. Screw sizes in the USA are standardized. The most common sizes, and the ones you'll find on Anymark products, are 440, 1032, or 1024, and quarter 20. Other common sizes are 632, 832, the first number of the name identifies what screw it is, i.e. 4, 6, and 8. After number 10 screws, the size term becomes fractional, i.e. quarter and 5 sixteenths, and doubles as the size of the bolt in inches. The second part of the name identifies the thread type. The higher the number, the more thread per inch is on the screw. For example, a number 1024 will have fewer threads than a number 1032, but will be the same outside diameter. Some products use metric screws, which are labeled M number, where number is the number corresponding to that metric size. Screws that use metric sizes will also require metric Allen wrenches and sockets. When choosing a screw, your biggest consideration is generally size. How big of a screw can fit here? Is it strong enough for this joint? What's the minimum screw size strong enough to fit here? Thread size is typically not a key consideration for competitive robotics, but it is important for some applications like air and water sealing. Higher thread count screws will result in a better seal. Now let's walk through the different tools needed for each screw. Screws use a variety of tools corresponding to their head types. The most common and generally the best option is the Allen wrench, which can come either as a set of multiple sizes or as individual wrenches. A notable type of Allen wrench is the ball end wrench, which increases the possible angle of attack when using the wrench, so some hard to reach bolts can be put in or removed. Hex head bolts use standard wrenches or socket wrenches. Flathead screwdrivers and Phillips screwdrivers are used for flathead or Phillips screws. Sometimes you need to make whatever you're screwing together be completely flat for one reason or another, and this is where countersinking and counterboring come in. Bolt heads generally stick up out of your part and make this difficult, but with socket head and flathead screws, there is a solution. For a socket head screw, you can counterbore your holes to be the height of the head, fully submerging it in the parts. Essentially, make the hole bigger where you want the head to fit through. A similar process is done for flathead screws, called countersinking. To countersink, use a special bit to drill a tapered hole in the part so that the flathead can sink in. The next topic we're going to tackle is nuts. There's a wealth of information to talk about in regards to nuts, but I'll cover just the basics here. Normal nuts look like you'd expect. They have threads on the inside and a hex pattern on the outside to use a wrench on. Star nuts have a lock washer built into them, which will dig into the material on both sides of it and prevent the nut from rotating on its own or loosening the joint. Lock nuts contain a nylon patch that threads into bolts. This dramatically reduces the ability of the assembly to loosen up and are generally the best option for attaching components in FRC or FTC. Since fasteners are a complex topic and there's still a lot more to learn, check out Tell Me All About Fasteners, Part 2.